Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we are continuing with our custom message box. This is part six. Today, we're going to learn how to specify the default and cancel buttons for your message box so that the default button doesn't always have to be the first one. Right. If it pops open and the user accidentally hits enter, you don't want them always pushing yes, especially if the question is, do you want to delete all these records? Right. You might want the default value to be no. We can do that with a regular message box. Today, we're going to do it with our custom message box. And I'm going to teach you a new way to reference controls on forms using the me.controls collection, which is a lot more powerful. This is all coming up today in part six, which means. If you have not yet watched parts one through five, go watch those first and then come on back. You'll find a link down below you can click on. All right, so we got the possibility to have three buttons on here. I only got two, right? Buttons one and three. But what if you pop the message box open and you don't want the default value to be the first one? This came up a lot in my regular classes. And in fact, I made another whole video on the different options for the standard message box because you might not want that first button to be the default, right? So go watch this video if you want to learn that. Now we've got some different things we could do here. We could simply swap the button captions the way we've built this, or we can simply tell the message box which one is the default button, just like we do with a standard message box, right? So let's go back to our function. Bring up your code editor and find your global module and find the my message box right here. What we're going to do is, you know how forms can have a default button and a cancel button, right? We've talked about this before. The default button is the button that gets pressed when you press enter. And the cancel button is the one that gets pressed when the user hits escape. All right. So we're going to we're going to set both of those. And by setting the default button as no, it'll basically take the effect of doing what we want. We'll also set the focus on that button, too, because if there's no text boxes on the form, the button that gets pushed is the one that has focus. So we're going to say optional. Actually, let's make a new line here. You'll see why in a minute. Optional, optional default button as along equals one. Optional cancel button as along equals two. Actually, let's go three because we got yes, no, and cancel, right? So by default, the default button will be one, the cancel button will be three. All right, we're going to add it to our arguments down here. So if, actually, we don't need an if for this one. It's just going to be args equals args and default button equals default button and a semicolon. All right, it's got to come in with a value. So give it whatever value sent in. And again, this is something that you, the developer, is setting. Your end user will never be setting these options. So you just make sure you set a proper option there, right? <laughs> okay. So now the function can handle default button and cancel button parameters. Now let's go to the form and make the form aware of these two things, right? So go over to the form and find down here. We're going to say case default button. What are we going to do here? Well, we have the value of default button in the name value one field, right? In that field, but it's stored in this array, right? So name value one represents which button one, two or three. Okay. I could put another if statement in here and say, if name value equals one, then button one dot default equals true else. You know, if it's two, then but but I can do this with just one line. If I know how to talk to the form and reference the controls using the controls collection, right? So instead of saying button one dot default equals true, whatever. Okay. Instead of calling it button one, you can also call it me dot controls button one, just like that. That's the same thing just a different way of naming your buttons. There's a controls collection in the form, which is me. 
And in that collection, you'll find button one. Now, the reason why we use this, the reason why you can use this notation is because now that this is a string, you can actually put a value in there. I could say button X like that, and it'll use button one, button two, button three, whatever I send to it. Now, where is my X? Well, my X is in this, right? So we'll just substitute that, okay? So this is me dot controls button, whichever button, one, two, or three, right? Dot, actually we gotta do, I think in this case, you can't have that space there, all right? Dot, eh, maybe we're not gonna get the IntelliSense. Anyways, dot default equals true, all right? We're setting the default property of button X to true. And in access, only one control can have that true property. So if you set one to true, the, any, everybody else could set the false. Access handles that by itself. Okay. Now, same thing for the cancel button. I'm just going to copy this. Copy, paste, right? Cancel button. Me controls button X, whichever button we send it, dot cancel equals true. Okay, save it. Now, let's save this. Let's come back out here. Let's change our hello world button a little bit. Actually, let's go right in from here. We're gonna say, is Picard the greatest captain? All right, we're gonna just use yes and no. Yes, no, comma, button three will send empty, comma, default button. Let's make the default button two. And the cancel button can be three. If there is no third button, you just won't have a cancel button. If they hit escape, nothing will happen, right? But as we have it now, the default button should be two, button two. All right, let's try it and see. Save it, open it up, and press enter. And now it still said welcome aboard. What's the problem? What's wrong? What's going on? Well, if you open it up, you'll see that yes still has the focus. See that? It's the first control in the tab order. So it's gonna get the focus automatically. All right, so in order for our code to work, we gotta go back to here. We also have to put the focus on this button. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna go like this and say dot set focus. That's gonna make sure that that button has the focus when the form opens up. And now if we come in here, and open it up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. No has the focus. See that? And no is also our default button. And again, you have to have a text box on the form really for that to work. Right? You have to have some other controls so when you hit enter. But by just by putting the focus there, you can do it. Right? But I figured that code was good to have just in case you do decide to add text boxes to your form later. And this will still make it the default button. And now if you decide you want to do, you know, yes, no, cancel, save that. Now you got your third button showing up and that one will be the escape button. If I hit escape, it pushes that. It says airlock. Yeah, I think I changed the logic in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to put our else if L equals two, then else status, make up your mind, whatever, right? Save it. Come back out here. Click, hit escape and it pushed the third button. Okay, and there you go. Now you got the default button set in your form. All right, so that's gonna do it for part six, folks. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. That's your tech help video for today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more.
and YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. 
You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.